Okay, back on. Wow. Okay, I changed the battery pack, so we're good. Okay, so back to the story. My racist black family, part one, part two. This I had to, part two. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, man. So, so I said I'm I'm uh, I'm half black, half the half Ethiopian, right? So half of my family don't even like really speak English. The other half, they black, black, you know, whatever. Um, you cannot change your family. <laughs> You know, so whatever family you're born into, be it black, white, everything else in between, uh, you're going to be brought up with their values, usually their religion, morality, and their view of the world, right? The problem, at least in my opinion, is that uh, black, a lot of black people don't have much contact with people of other races. At least I did when I was growing up or whatever, but especially here in the South or whatever, a, a, a lot of black people, they just kind of live in their own bubble in black land over here. And it's just like a little segregated enclave of the rest of the world over here, right? So, like, I mean, if you looked at the neighborhood like a lot of my family lives in, my black side of the family here, it's like there's not any white people for quite some, not for a while not for miles like you could go all day without seeing a white person or uh, you know you might not see an asian person once every couple months that's not literally working in the store or working in some shop or restaurant there it's like they're you know black people are only it's like black and only black people typically live in black neighborhoods uh it's probably the same for spanish asian you know everything else dude it's uh people for whatever reason, people tend to hover or congregate around their own, so to speak. But part of my problem is that I don't really fit. If you're like kind of like a weird hybrid kind of person like me, it's like I'm not exactly accepted in a black community. Oh, he talks white. He looks different. He's this. I've had some people tell me, "Oh, you're that Brazilian guy," or some shit like that. And you know, it's. Uh, they know that I'm not quite a hundred percent them. Like I'm close, but I'm not like fucking. I'm not a real, real nigga to them. So it's like they're gonna try me. They're gonna exploit me and other shit more so than they would say DeAndre, Jermaine, Hightower, Jackson. You know, a real fucking six foot, six and a half foot black guy, big black man. You know. What the fuck? A big fucking guy that can throw cotton bales on his back. You know, I'm not that nigga. You know, it's just not going to happen. Sorry. So, you know, that's that's the whole hang-up that I've got with being like, you know, you're black, but you're not black enough. But the white people, I'm probably just, yeah, you're black. you that black guy, whatever. They don't want to they don't want to hear the subcategories and all that other shit. So, it is what it is, man. But, yeah. Ugh black family so my thing is that I think that I have a unique perspective that I get to see black people as I get to live in I get to grow up in a house full of black people you know but I get to see I get to uh, see them as an outsider would versus an insider you know because like if you're if you're in like if I'm, if I'm in a house right and everybody else is five to ten shades blacker than me you know, the hair is different than me, everything, everything, everything. They don't exactly look like me, right? So, right off the bat, it's like something's like, okay, well, they're, fa they're my family, they love me, they care about me, but I, they, they look differently than me, so I'm going to see them as like an outsider kind of would. You know, it's, it's just, it's factual. So, like, I get to observe. I get to observe motherfuckers and see them and... These are my observations or whatever on this on this episode or whatever. So, uh, my my opinion of black my black family experience at least I can't speak for others. I can just speak of my own, you know. So, you know, and I'm talking about my people, or whatever. If I'm going to and I say this one 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 prerequisite to this, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna self reflect and look at myself in the mirror, right, and I'm gonna change the way that. Get in, I'm getting in shape, doing like trying to be the best version of myself. You know, I'm trying to do all that I can and whatever. I'm going to self-reflect and look within. Obviously, I'm going to look at, look at the people around me and family and close people to me and shit, right? I mean, I'm going to look at them under a microscope, actually, and determine how they 
fit in in relation to me. So these are my observations. So don't please, you know, do not feel fucking, well, feel how you want to. I'm not telling people how to feel. But it's like, if you're in my family, friends, whatever, and you don't like what I'm saying or whatever, then, you know, whatever. Write a comment below. Dislike it. Fuck, what are you going to do? Slap me in the streets. I don't know. Okay, anyway, this is just my observation. So, disclaimer aside. All right. Growing up in the black family household, I can say that uh, my experience, black people would be, a lot, I should have a notepad here, but superstitious, hyper-religious, uh, very well trained, indoctrinated by the system, women, feminists, totally, uh, but uh, there's a couple different variants of feminism, I know, but like I'm talking like the 1970s version 1.0 or some shit, like they're on that shit. So, and with that, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, lots of shit going on. Uh, fuck. But mostly, and every, family, every family's got problems, but I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out about some of the things that I think have affected me, you know what I'm saying, growing up. A black the, the, the black entitlement mentality, the whole uh, waiting for a hookup, waiting for people, you know, help, help lend a helping hand, all that shit, all the give back to the community thing, all the, you know, that shit doesn't work in practice. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, man. But, uh, yeah, black people, they can definitely be racist, too. Uh, there, there's, there's a, uh, there's a thought like among black academics and whatever that black people they can't be racist because they don't, at least in mass, possess the social geopolitical power, whatever the word I'm looking for is, to be institutional with their racism and affect day to day life policies, this, that, and the other. And that, that's like the black academic argument, you know? But uh, that doesn't matter. I still think black people can be racist. I mean, even on, even on a micro level, just right down to their own community, the people that they interact with, you know what I'm saying? I uh, think that they're the most racist towards one another, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I also think that's inverse for white people too. White people hate white people more than anybody. I mean, it's all, uh, yeah, I guess you can't, you know, so I guess I, should, I shouldn't be calling this a flaw of black people because all people have infighting more so within whatever. I actually read about um, male aggression and studying all this psychotherapy shit, NPD abuse, stuff like that. I've read that most of the time, like 90 to 95 percent of the time in society at whole, in the whole world, aggression and violence or whatever in men 90 to 95 percent of the time, it's intra, intra, t r a, intra racial, meaning like it's within the same race, same sex, same this. So white guys have problems with white guys 90 to 95 percent of the time. Black guys have problems with other black guys 90 to 95 percent of the time. It's documented. There's stats. It's crazy. Women, on the other hand, I've read they're actually more likely to get violent with their intimate partner or family member 60 to 70% of the time. Whereas with men, it's always with strangers or outsiders, regardless of the social circumstance. It's usually with a non-related person in your family or something like that from what I'm reading. So it's interesting shit anyway. But yeah, uh, black people, black people, black people, uh, they have a very... They have a very, in my span, like, let me talk about my own family here, but it's like, I would say that they have a small, small view of the world. Um, um, most do not own passports. Many have never left their zip code or city or, or state or county or some shit like that. So a lot of them, they don't have fucking driver's licenses. They can't go, in, I mean, it's ridiculous how many restrictions. You know, you could say that, oh, it's the system, it's racism. It might be, I don't know, but it is what it is, you know. But by having a limited, limited resources, no access to travel, uh, poor quality food because of poor quality education and diet and not learning how to 
watch YouTube videos of how to eat properly and shit like that. Most of it is like learned, it's what they call learned helplessness in psychology or psychiatry. It's like when, some, when somebody calls you up to say, hey, come fix my computer, or how do I Google this, or something like that. It's like a redundant circular question that they want to just do just to enable the process of enabling for the fuck of it, really. It's, it's stupid, it's retarded. But that's what a lot of, uh, in my experience, black people in my family and shit have problems with. That self, you know, why should I do something but someone can do it for me? Fuck it, you know? But the only problem with that mindset or that attitude is it keeps you stuck right where you're at. It keeps you stuck in the room you're in and the house you're in and the life and with the people you have around you. It keeps you stuck when you just keep waiting for shit to happen. And that's my... Uh, I don't like that mentality they have. You know, I, I, I would say that, it might, at least from what I from what I view, uh, the other side of my family, my uh, African side of the family, they're a little more. What can I say? The work ethic's a little better. They're from abroad, so they know they have to come here and do something to get by. Or you can't just live off. I can't just go to another country and live off their resources or something anywhere in the world. It's not. They're not going to allow that shit. So it's like. If you know of a country that allows this, let me know. <laughs> but I don't think it's out there. And if it is, it probably is like they own you or some shit. So uh, the entitlement thing, man, it's like I guess I, I just think that foreigners don't have it and they can't, they can't have that. But they, you can't come to another country and be like, what do you owe me? You owe me this. Or, you know, fuck that. It's like you got you to gotta work for it, probably more so than somebody that's already here. And they know this off the rip. So uh, the work ethic is different. Black. Just black families, man. Uh, a lot of the, uh, fuck, I don't know what the handicaps are from. I mean, it's like after doing much studying of like, okay, um, sure, there, there's a little bit of alcoholism in that side of the family. Uh, there's... I mean, you could talk all, everyone could talk all kinds of shit. You know, we got Jim Crow, segregation, alcoholism, this, that. You know, it's, it's everything. It's, it's a combination of everything, of uh, just being at the bottom. How about, how about I just put it to you this way? Being at the bottom of the social dominance hierarchy. If you're at the very bottom of a social dominance hierarchy in any society, in any part of the world, it's dangerous because you're like, it's easy to get fucking killed down there. You don't want to be at the bottom. You don't have to be at the top of the pyramid with the guy that's got all the fucking money and all the resources and all that shit. But you definitely don't want to be at the